Um, one thing I, I'm going to probably forget later on, um, we do do development. So if anyone's a wholesaler, have land, vacant land, especially anything to that sort, like email me, let me know. We're more than happy to look it over and you know, provide an offer for it. So that's my spiel. That's it for, for that part. Um, so this presentation is going to be um, uh, SB9 ADUs and development. So uh, my partner over there, uh, Salvador, is actually an architect, and, and he has a construction company. So he does a lot of the ADUs and development with us. So later on, if you guys have like really detailed questions about like development, specifically from that hard standpoint, not the numbers and that part, uh, Salvador could probably help you with that. Um, point. I know some of you guys are doing ADUs. Um, we're going to differentiate the difference between what the new law for SB9 is versus ADUs. Um, so if you haven't done an ADU yet, um, it's kind of a daunting task, especially if that's your first one. But if you've done it already, moving on to development is a little bit easier because you've done some of the, uh, the, all the steps, right? The plans, right? The permitting, um, the foundation, the framing, um, the rough. Uh, closing everything and getting uh, certificate occupancy, right? So with SB9, it's something um, bigger, right? Mainly you don't have those ADU restrictions, but also with SB9, it allows, there's two parts to it. One part is uh, the split. So basically one, it allows the lot split is one part. And the second, and um, this slide is online. So um, if you guys don't want to write like crazy, They'll give you the give you the the link to it. So so I'm gonna go pretty fast because it's pretty detailed and we only have about an hour. So there's the two parts to this law. One is the lot split part. You're allowed to split a lot into two. There's a lot of um, restrictions to that, but it allows you to do that. Um, number two, on each lot, it allows you to build a duplex. So basically, if you have a single family lot. You can split it, build a duplex here and a duplex here, right? Which is four units on a single family lot. And everyone's like, wow. But there's a lot of, lot of restrictions. So, so what I told Christina before, they did an analysis of how many lots you can do in California, because this is a California law. It turns out only 5% are probably eligible. So you have to pick the correct lot. If you pick the other 95%, you just wasted a lot of money. Don't waste money. That's not how you get rich. That's a bad idea. OK, so, um, so possibly you could do four to eight. Um, in multifamily, if you build a duplex, some cities can allow you to build ADUs on top. So technically, it can go from four to eight, depending upon the city. So if the city's like, uh, I don't want a build city, you're, you're probably stuck with four. If a city's very, very you know, liberal about it, you're probably going to be eight, right? So doing that is going to be really, really tricky, especially if you have a small lot. So ideally, you guys probably already know, like, hey, what lots are best? Big lots, right? So bigger the lot, the better. And there's a lot of big, like, big single family lots out there, especially where it doesn't shine, right? So, so uh, Inland Empire, it's, it's great. Like, city of LA, it's going to be tricky because we have smaller lots. Like every lot is about five, 6,000 square feet. Splitting that means 3,000, 3,000. That's probably not going to work, right? But in suburban areas, it's going to be a gold mine for sure. But again, only 5% of the lot's going to work. Um, so lots of restrictions. We'll go through some of the restrictions. Um, for splits, one of the big restrictions is it has to be owner occupied, or at least you have to sign an affidavit saying you're going to live there for three years. But you, you know how that owner occupied thing goes. I'm not saying anything. I'm just, yeah, yeah. OK, anyways. Um, also, there's some protections for owner occupied properties. So that's why it doesn't apply for every property. Because if it's been owner occupied for the last three years, it's not going to be eligible. All right, so background about what, what this law. Um, in Portland, they passed a similar law two years ago where they basically allowed every single family lot to be a multifamily lot. You know, so, so this, is, this isn't like new. This isn't like something that California dreamt up first. It's, it's been happening. So the likelihood, and I'll tell you why it's been happening, especially on the East Coast, I mean the West Coast. 
Um, so 70% of lots in California are single family. That's a lot of lots, 70% of every single lot, uh, single family. Um, there's like 150,000 people in shelters and homeless in California every day. Um, over 55, 56% of low income housing spends more than 50%, right? Because I know like when I look at the numbers, when I run the credit checks for all our tenants, like they're getting close to 50%, right? And a big part is like they couldn't find housing anywhere else. And some of our, our housing is in, in, in you know, class C buildings, right? And, and there's literally not enough. Um, so the average household, average house, it's, uh, average house is seven times household income. In 1960, it was only three times, right? And if you think of now, it's like even higher. The multiple is even higher. Um, with the ADU law, one thing with the ADU law is that when you build an ADU, it's not considered a single family. You can't sell it separately. With SB9, you can, right? What that, what that means is now, hey, I could build a duplex, I can make it in a condo. And what does that mean when I make it in a condo? The price goes up, right? So there's four, we're four million homes short in California. Um, Oregon has passed a similar law, Portland, Oregon. Um, so I did that twice, apologies. Um, so one couple of reasons, one, land costs are really high in California. Um, zoning, right, we had exclusionary zoning just for rent control and building fees are really high in California in general. All right, so housing permits, this, I'm gonna go through some of these slides really quickly. So housing permits in California has been dropping, right? Since 1963, if you look at it, the trend is downward. We're building less and less and less. One big part, we have less and less land to build. Apartment building, the same trend, it's going down slowly, right? You can see if you drew a line straight through everything, it's going down. And the trend is, it's gonna continue going down. So supply is going to continue going down. Um, if you look at housing production versus uh, housing formation, so this number, what it, I know I'm getting really geeky about this. Obviously, you can tell I teach econ. I apologize about that, but you know I love this stuff. You guys just have to suffer through it. A couple of slides. All right, um, housing production versus housing formation. So what this means is, if it's red, that means we are not producing enough housing for the amount of families that are being put together, right? So you look at it, like definitely not San Bernardino, definitely not in the central area. Uh, Monterey, yes, uh, but if you go all the way down, California, we're, we're working really hard, but still, like look, California, LA is doing a good job, but think about it, what's happening in LA? Is it enough? It's not, but this is considered a good job everywhere else? is even worse, right? Like the, the last year, the city that, is in, that had the largest increase in rent was, anyone? No, so Fresno. Like Fresno, who, who knew, right? Like they're not, like the opportunity is just not here. The opportunity for SB9, ADUs, is all over the state. Like it is like one of those opportunities you guys have to like build this really quick force wealth, like once, like only within the next 10 years. So job formation versus household formation, how many jobs versus, versus household. Um, so if you notice, the ones that are like lighter means they're not producing enough jobs. So where you wanna invest is obviously where there are more jobs, right? So, so these areas here, there's a lot more jobs um, as well. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at areas where you're just deciding to build extra units because you need, you need the, the demand for what you're gonna build, right? So if you're building something where there's no demand, guess what, your rents are gonna be low. So just keep that in mind when you guys are looking at areas as well. All right, here's the real reason why we don't have any land. From a topographic geographical standpoint, guess what's all this? It's all mountains. Where can we build in, East in the West Coast? Just this little sliver. That is it. If you went cross country, if you drive through here, what do you see here? Plains. The plains is all flat. There's no mountains. You could build as much as you want all over here. There's endless supply of land. But guess what here? 
Like, you, you're not building on top of mountains, nor are you building on top of the ocean. That's it. There's no more land. Like, we couldn't make any more. Climate change makes the ocean go further in. There's even less land. So you think about it, how valuable every single piece of land is in the West Coast. There's no more. Like, unless, you know, like God magically creates more land, it's not going to happen, right? So anyways, think about it. That's why every single lot, every single piece of land is extremely important now, um, or valuable. All right, let's talk about the first part of SB9, the lot split. So one, it has to be, you have to be owner-occupied for at least one of the lots. One of the lots. And basically what that means in that law, it says you have to sign an affidavit saying that you're going to stay for at least three years. So whether you stay or not, I don't know. Who's going to check? I don't know. So uh, the minimum square foot lot is 1,200. I doubt we're going to be splitting 1,200 square foot lots, but that's the minimum for this law. Uh, the, the, the split, the split of the lot, it cannot be more than 60-40, right? You could do 50-50, you could do 55-45. You cannot do 35-65. It has to be 60-40. So that makes it a little tricky when you're splitting a lot. So what that means is you have to pick your lots very carefully. Because if you have to do some weird lot and you have to do 70-30, it's not going to get approved, right? You have to meet that, uh, those numbers. So, uh, restrictions on, on housing, right, uh, on afford affordability and tenant restrictions. You cannot split a lot that's been occupied by a tenant in the past three years. So if you buy a lot, it has to be owner-occupied. You can't buy a lot that's been occupied by a tenant. Another thing is, how are they going to verify? I don't know. So, so again, the last thing is, it has to be a single family lot. It can't be an R2 or R whatever, it has to be an R1, right? Or whatever code your zoning is. It has to be a single family lot. All right, so a couple other restrictions. You're like, so many restrictions. Like, it's not gonna be easy to make money, right? So one, it cannot be a historical district. And what is every city trying to do right now? Like Pasadena tried to do this, or they're trying to do this. This, there's this area near Glen Arm. I don't know what area. They're trying to make a historical district. They did it, guess when? Last month, right after SB9 passed. Be I know, I know. <laughs> so so they, that, that's one restriction. It can't be a historical district, right? So don't be buying historical district. Don't be driving by Jefferson Park or, you know, large amount area. It's not going to work. Right? So keep that in mind. It must be urban area. Basically, almost every area in LA is urban. So most areas in Southern California are urban. So you know, unless you're you know, where it doesn't shine, it's probably not urban. If it's agricultural, it doesn't work. Um, so here's another thing is you cannot split the original law. You cannot split a split. It says it in that law. I know some of you guys were creative. What if I get a 20,000 lot, split it to 10-10, I split 10-10 to 5-5, I'm going I'm be, I'm, I'm to be a millionaire with like a couple splits, right? No, they already thought of it. You can't do it. Um, so neither the owner or anyone acting in concert with the owner who's previously split can split again, right? So, so they're trying to stop it from splitting multiple times. Completely fair to say. Um, so some of the ideas. Like, you can basically, if you split a lot, you're able to do something like this, right? Especially if the lot is long, right? If it's a wide lot, then you could probably do this. But if it's a long lot, it becomes a little bit tricky, right? So keep that in mind. Like, the, the, the orientation of the lot matters as well. Exactly. Corner lots are amazing. Why are corner lots amazing? You have one entrance from one side, enters from the other side, right? That's why we love building a corner lots. Because if we build two buildings, I got one building facing one side, one building facing the other side, right? And that's wonderful, because now I can make it a little bit more separate. So again, like these are some of the things they've been doing in uh, Portland and Seattle. 
they're building a lot of these slimmer, slimmer townhouses or, or single families like this. Um, so the second part of the law is the duplex part. Every single family lot now, you can build a duplex. But again, there's restrictions, right? So again, only R1 lots, right? So it's single family lots, urban lots. Um, here's the HOA thing. Like what if you had like a PUD where you have a, you know, land and you have your lot, can you, can you build a duplex with the HOA? The likelihood is no, right? Because they already stopped it on the ADU part. So if you're gonna fight the duplex one, it's gonna be even harder. If you can do it, more power to you. And also you spend a lot of money on your lawyer, right, to do that. I don't know if it's worth it. So um, here's another thing about the duplex. You cannot demolish a RSO or rent controlled building. Right? So most of LA is gonna be tricky, right? Can you build another building next to it? Yes, you cannot demolish that original one though. So what that means is you can't, you can't do ground up and build a duplex on that. You can't, but you can build another unit. So uh, another restriction, this trick, this one's really tricky. I don't know how you're gonna get around it, but I'm sure people will. You cannot demolish more than 25% of the existing building. Right, so if the existing building is like 1,000 square feet, the most you can demolish is 250, right? But I don't know if you could do this, like here's the thing, I don't know if it could work, but if you add 500 and you demolish like some back half, I don't know, right? Like you, I, you have to figure that out. Again, it can't be historical, it's building a duplex. Um, and here's another tricky thing. On the law, it says, that the local agency can allow or not allow a ADU. So what that means is the city can, if you build the duplex, they can say no, no more building. You've already built the duplex, we're not gonna allow the ADU. And that law says, the law says it's completely up to the local agency. So agencies that don't want you to build are probably gonna say, if you built the duplex, we're not giving you the ADU. So, Agencies that are a little more liberal and want more building, they're probably like, you build the duplex, you can still have an ADU, right? So that is completely up to the local agency. So you probably know what certain cities will do. You know, the cities that don't want to build are going to say no. Cities that want to build are going to say yes, that you could build an ADU with the duplex. Well, they got some of the power back after the ADU law, right? Exactly, exactly. So it gives them a little bit of flexibility there, right? Um, so also another thing with the duplex, it cannot be a short-term rental. It's simply it's in there, short-term rental. Again, I don't know how they're gonna follow that up or, or you know, enforce that, but who knows. All right, duplexes. Um, here's another, another thing. The setbacks and height requirements for the duplex are still the same as the local agency. They're gonna determine it. So, so it isn't the same as the ADU law where it gives you very liberal uh, setbacks. These setbacks and heights are based on the local agency. So basically, if the original house is two stories, then your height restriction is probably two stories, right? If the setbacks are, are you know, like really deep, then they might be really deep. So it might throw out those lots as well, right? Because you know, there's some properties like, you know, obviously like San Marino or like Beverly Hills, the front setback is really, really far. If you split the lot, guess what? And you still have to have a front setback, you're not gonna have any buildable space left. Right? So that's something else to keep in mind when you're looking at lots. Um, so this, this obviously, you, if you, you need egress, obviously you need a path or road to the second unit, especially if you have a very thin lot. Right? If you have a wide lot, no problem, you can just go in the street. But if it's a thin lot, you're gonna need to make a flag lot. Right? And the flag lot takes away buildable space because you're using a lot of buildable space for that road in. And I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, so again, this could be limiting on your buildable space area. So again, like obviously if it's like small lot and you can, you're able to build it really skinny, then you could probably build it like this, right? Side by side and you can build it, you know, into it, right? So if you have a smaller one, if you demolish like part of it and build up, it doesn't say you can't build up on the original. It just says you can't demolish 25%. 
So again, or you could do something closer like this. Um, if you're able to do it on the split lot. So again, on the original lot, if you have an existing one, it's going to be hard to build because you can't demolish more than 25%. But on the new lot, guess what? You probably can. You can build whatever you want on the new lot, as long as it's a duplex, right? So then it gives you a little more, a little more flexibility on a new lot. The old lot is a lot more restrictive. So strategy one, if you're going to do like the easiest strategy for SB9 that I can imagine, again, this law isn't finalized from a local standpoint. The easiest, the easiest money would probably be just splitting a lot. Because splitting a lot is basically hiring a surveyor, right? Applying for it, and can they stop you? Nope. nope. And guess how much that lot is worth now? Mm. Hundreds of thousands of dollars because you spent three, four months splitting a lot. That's it. That's it. If you find a lot, you can split it, you're done. Like, that's just a few hundred thousand dollars right there, right, for that lot. So you split the lot, use the funds to develop a duplex, right? If you split the lot, you can. You know, you might have to get a hard money to finance, but you could build a duplex on the original lot and sell the other lot. You can use the funds from the split to build duplex on your, your first lot, right? And then that's pure cash that you got for there. So you could do that, and you can refinance that, the, the original lot. Uh, strategy two. Obviously, splitting a lot's the easiest thing to do. Like surveyor, submit the plans, submit everything, just like split the lot. You could build a duplex on get the build duplex on the front lot. You could refinance and then finish the second one and refinance again. Right? That's basically you just built four units. If you get the right lot, you can do this. Like so, split the lot, build duplex on the first one. When you're done, you have a lot and a duplex. Refinance, get the money out from from the build, build the second one and refinance all of it. Right? Because you just forced equity on three additional buildings, right? It's like, it's like you have the same lot. You don't have to buy a lot again. So what's great about this is the land cost is already in there. You already paid the land cost. You don't need to pay it again. So ideal lots, some of you guys already thought of the ideal lots. Again, like larger lots are ideal lots, right? Because basically you can split it. If it's like 20,000, it'll be 10, 10. Really easy to build, 10, 10. Really hard to build if it's a 6,000 square foot lot, split three, three. That's really tough. Um, corner lots are really good. So if you can somehow get a corner lot, it's perfect because you can split it one side and one corner. That's really easy. Uh, wide lots are better than probably long lots, right? Because wide lots, you could just pull, make two driveways, whereas long lots, you're going to need to make a flag lot. Right? Um, lots of sewer access. Here's one thing that's going to be tricky. If you need to build something in the back, you have to get sewer access separately for that unit. Right? I cannot put a, a sewer line under the front lot. They're not going to let you do that. Right? So if the front lot's here and your unit is in the back, you cannot put your sewer line under the front. Right? You can't share it. You have to go all the way around. So the longer lots, guess what? If you're going to go out like 50, 60, 80, 80 square feet down or even 100 square feet, that's a lot of money in sewer. You know, that's going to add up on your cost. So, so look at sewer access. Um, ideally, if you're going to buy one, you want the house to the side, to a certain side of the lot so you can split it. Right? If the house is dead center, I don't know how you're going to split it, right? That's why only 5% of lots are, are, are eligible for this. Because a lot, of, a lot of houses are built in the, in the center versus the side, right? But you guys do see the lots that where, like, why does this person have a really long backyard, right? You're like, why? And then the, the garage is over here, and then the house is over here. And then you're like, that's weird. But now you're thinking, like, that's a gold mine now, right? Like, you're like, I can split that. Um, so your sewer line, make sure your sewer line's not through someone's lot or your front lot or through a back lot because that's going to cost a lot of money. Like um, our, one of our development partners, he built something. We eventually bought it. We, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we weren't developers on that one, but we bought it. But he had to buy the lot in the back 
because the sewer line, he thought it went straight to the road, but guess what? It went backwards. And it went through the other lot, and they wouldn't let him dig. So what he did, he just bought the other lot. But it's expensive. If you don't have enough money to buy another lot in the back, then like, think, so make sure you know which way the sewer is going. Uh, lots with no elevation issues. So you see a lot of lots in LA, but, but half of the backyard, it's an elevated lot. So building on that is going to be really expensive. So make sure it's flat. Like obviously flat lots are better than some with elevation. Even with some elevation, it can push your costs up. So if you don't want to pay an extra 50, 100,000 for foundation, then avoid these lots. If you have tons of money, build whatever you want, right? Um, so if this, this situation, if it's a thinner lot, what you're likely going to have to do, hopefully it's not like this, where the flag lot is a really, really long driveway, right? So if the house is set back a lot, you're going to have to push it back even more, right? This split is not going to work because you notice this is more like 70-30. So keep that in mind. Like you have, to, you have to split it properly. This is probably closer to like 60-40. Right, you could probably do that. And what's great about this, if you go duplex here and a duplex back here, it'll probably work. Right, so, so again, um, there's not a lot of lots. So 5% of lots work, just be careful with that. So again, ideal lots, I think we went through that. Um, so let's talk about SB9 and ADUs, right? Some of you built ADUs, ADUs are super easy. Well, not super easy. Like, you know, easier. 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 Like, from a development center, easier. SB9 is not going to be easy, but it pays off a lot more. Because you basically sell off each one. Are these separate APNs, or are they getting They're, a new APN? Well, if you split the lot, it's going to be a separate APNs. But if you build, like, a duplex, but if you build it with the HOA, you pay a lawyer to do an HOA, you could sell it as condos, right? Like two condos in one lot. You could, you could sell them separately. So basically, when you buy a condo, it's the same APN, just different houses on the same APN with the HOA. So technically, you could build a duplex condo unit and sell each one off. What that means is now it's even more valuable, right? So, uh, SB9, technically sell them separately, so you can build a condo unit. Um, SB9 allows bigger units. So ADU capped at 1,200, and it's normally capped at one story. Unless you, you try to squeeze that 16 feet and add a loft or do something magical, it's still not going to work so well. But this one, SB9 allows you to build as big as the, a single family. So, so that allows you to build bigger. Um, as long as your lot's bigger, right? So LA lots are smaller, um, Inland Empire, wherever, they're, they're huge lots. They're like 20,000 20, square foot lots. Those lots, you can build the four units very easily, super easily. LA, not so much, right? So, but also there's a lot of areas with huge lots, right? Just outside of like bigger metro areas. Uh, SB9, uh, the, you have to, it's a separate house, so there's higher costs. You have to connect all the lines separately. You can't piggyback off a, a, the sewer line, right? So with ADUs, you could, you could eventually piggyback off the same sewer line going out to the, the road. No, this one's going to have to be separate all the way, all the way. It's just like a separate house. It's going to have to be all the way separate, so you can't connect. So it has to go directly to the, to the main, right? because it's treated as a separate house. So you can sell it, that's why you can sell it separately. So it's built exact separate. Um, so SB9, uh, the heights are, are higher, right? So um, you could build the same as the, the, the original house. If it's two stories, two stories. If it's three stories, three stories, right? So, but most lots are gonna be two stories. Uh, some cons, so SB9 needs right away, so you need that egress, right? So you need a road going to it. Um, SB9, also, you have to pay all the impact fees, right? So impact fees, the school fees, all the fees that you're building a new construction, you have to pay. Whereas for ADUs, you don't have to pay some of those, right? If you, if you, if you go 
lower than a certain size, you don't have to pay those. So for uh, ADUs in LA, if it's, if it's like uh, 750 or less, you don't have to pay. If it's more, then you're gonna have to pay all those fees. Um, SB9 has parking restrictions, right? So I, I, I didn't read exactly what it's gonna be, one or two. You're gonna have to provide parking. ADUs, you do not need to provide parking as long as you're close to anything, apparently, right? <laughs> like, they didn't specify if it was like a bus, a mini bus, a trolley. Everyone just said it goes, right? So that's what's great about the ADU. You can just do it anywhere. You don't need the parking, right? And it's really tough um, if you need the parking in certain areas. So, so again, this, that's, that's one, one advantage of the ADU versus the SB9. Um, SB9s are only on, SB9 is obviously more expensive overall. The construction cost is going to be higher. You need more capital. You need more time. The permitting is going to be longer. So everything's going to be longer. But again, the return is also more, right? So, so there's pros and cons of that one. Uh, SB9 is only on R1s. You can build ADUs on almost anything in California, right? Multifamily, single family, like anywhere, any garage is like an ADU potential. Like people build ADUs, all they want are like places with garages. That's it. That's all they buy, right? And that's easy. You put in the money, six, nine months later, you refinance, you force equity, right? So here, it's gonna take a lot longer. Uh, everything's individually metered, as we said. But also, here's another thing. If the new construction, it's considered new construction in the city, if the city says new construction requires sprinklers, you have to provide sprinklers. If it requires solar, you need to provide solar, right? So, so you're gonna have to add these added costs as well. With ADUs, you just build a box, put a roof, some windows, doors, <laughs> rent, it out. rent it out, right? It's like it's pretty straightforward. The, the, well, obviously there's restrictions. I, I'm not, it's not that easy. But, but obviously SB9, you're basically building a whole new house, right? But also when you build a new house, you can sell that house separately, which is a clear advantage. With the ADU, it always comes with the original lot, you can never separate it, right? So that's, that's one, one, one limitation there. All right, when to ADU or when to you know, do ADUs uh, versus SB9 and you're in a lot that you could possibly do it is one, in tough local zoning, right? So areas which are gonna try to restrict SB9, I don't know if you wanna try to build a duplex, but if they're not gonna, they're, they're trying to stop everyone, I don't know if you want to be the pioneer for it. I wouldn't want to be a pioneer and waste like hundreds of thousands of dollars trying. But if you want to do it and you like adventure and litigation, <laughs> knock yourself out, right? Uh, ADUs, you can build on multiple units, right? Not just a single family, which is great. Um, ADUs, you should build ADUs in small lots, right? So lots, obviously, 95% of the lots, you cannot split. Just build an ADU. Don't even cry over it. Just be happy with your extra 100 something, 200,000 instead of half a million. Don't cry. You'll still be alive. It's fine. You know? You know, so Vegas might not be as fun, but you'll still be fine. All right. So ADU when you're low in capital, because obviously ADUs are a lot cheaper, right? So you could do ADUs under 200. You could build a new single family. You're going to need three, four, or five hundred thousand dollars in capital. So, um, if you plan to keep the unit with the main house and you want to pass it down to your kids and you want to like eventually use it like that and pass it down to your family and have that little granny flat, then yes, you want to uh, keep it with the main house. Um, with the single family ADU laws, you can also have a junior ADU. So if you want an ADU and a junior ADU, then you'll want to do the ADU route, right? Because the minute you do a duplex, the city can say, oh, you can't build anymore, right? So if you want to build a junior ADU, meaning a, one that's attached to the main house and an ADU, then you have to pick. Uh, last one, when you have no parking available. Like, if it's tough to find parking, you can do an ADU because the parking restrictions are much lower. Whereas for the SB9, you, you probably have to provide at least two, two parking spaces for most, most new builds, at least two, right? 
So there's no stipulation in there. Um, for that, some of the local agencies are going to make it harder, obviously, to build a duplex. Oh, that's it. All right, cool. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, questions. <laughs> Sever, do you want to run through questions as well? Um, can, I, can I bring Salvador up? All right. Yeah, come up, come up. He, so Salvador is an architect. He has a construction company. Uh, we work with development with them. Um, he can answer all those like nitty gritty super questions. The law, again, is new. Like it came out like late September. The local agencies have not finalized theirs. They're going to drag their feet on it. They're going to take as long as possible. Um, they're going to do everything to stop you from building anything. So, so it, it might be a little while, but um, if you guys have questions. Has anyone, has any city actually passed anything? No. I, as far as I know, no city has done anything. I doubt they're going to do anything, especially yeah. Long Beach. Probably in January 1st. Yeah. Okay. And then and my question was, like, with ADs, you don't have to do any parking, but with uh, the SB9, you have, there has to be parking. There's, to, there's no way around that. Well, the city can decide. They don't want park if they want, but the likelihood is they're going to probably request it because it's the same as the, the, the next unit you're building, right? They're going to probably apply the same rules for the original house to the house that you're going to build. The question was, will the local agencies require the, the same parking requirements as the original house? The likelihood is I'm, I'm saying yes because if they don't want to build, they're going to put a restriction on it. Yeah, most likely. What about in Pasadena where they, everything has to be off the streets in the middle of the night? So you, they have to park on, on the property. How are they going to allow an ADU? With, how are they going to get around that parking restriction? For the ADU? Yeah, the likelihood is certain cities are a little sneakier than others. Um, so that's, that's not a building restriction, but that's a you know, um, parking restriction. Like if you build an ADU, technically they can't stop you from building ADU, but they can give you a lot of parking tickets, right? <laughs> so that's what they're trying to force you to do. I mean, I don't know how you're going to stop that unless someone's going to sue them about it. Um, I, I really. Part of, part of the reason on the ADU, why it's easy, is they, they waive the parking requirement. Yeah. They, they say you don't have to have any parking. So that's something as a landlord, you're going to have to work that issue out with your tenant. Because they don't have a, if they don't have parking, you might have to get a little space in your driveway. But it's part of the pro of the ADU. Hey, Christina. Yeah. You, uh, does he have a slide with his contact info? There's people here asking. Uh. You can email ed, E-D, <laughs> at peakmanagement.co. Yeah, peak management. Okay, you know what? Keep talking. I'll put it on my computer over here. Oh, okay. Oh, just put it in the chat. I'm just wondering if there's, there, you have a list of cities who are more ADU and SB9 friendly in LA, in LA in I mean, SB9 is still kind of new, so I guess we're going to, like, nobody has submitted plans to any city, most likely then after January 1st, 2022. ADUs, I mean, uh, most of the cities are very flexible. Again, in some cities, we have a lot of restrictions, uh, but a lot of these restrictions are on the design, high limit, things like this, but at the same time, they, they, they kind of force you to tell you to have some kind of ADU on any city, as long as you apply also new regulations. But yeah, I mean, most cities, you can have it. It's been nice, I'm not sure yet. So why, what's the difference? Well, let me formulate my question. Um, so I'm building an ADU, and I have a house, and the ADU now is getting a different street address. Why? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and how is that different than, you know, from it being its own single family residence? So the question was, uh, he's building a ADU, right. and through permitting, they're giving a new address uh, for it. So basically, for every new unit, they're going to assign a new address, um, mainly for the postal, uh, postal service, and obviously, it identifies that, 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 uh, that building. But it doesn't get a new number. Yeah, does not get a new APN number or lot. So it's basically just a new address on that same lot. So you know, obviously, if you're going to split your lot and do an a single family home on the other side, it's going to cost more money. So if you go ahead and do an ADU route first, right, and then you know, like a few years down, you decide that you do want to split the lot. Is there any like you know challenges or you know ramifications if you go with this ADU route first? So what I see is this. So if you're going to build the ADU and then b split the lot later. Um, you want to make sure you build the ADU where you can still split the lot. So you probably can get, get a surveyor. Survey closes heavy with this Yeah, we get the surveyor first. So you, when you do the split, you still have that 60-40 split. Because otherwise, if it's like 61-39%, then they're not going to allow it from a technicality standpoint. Um, but I would say just split the lot first, because splitting a lot is going to be cheaper than ADU. It's going to take time, four or six months, probably. Any other questions? Yeah. Does this apply to raw land also? It technically should apply for raw land that's a single family. Right. With the so single family. Yeah. yeah. So that's even perfect. That's even better. Right. Because you don't have to deal with. Not you not twenty five percent. You don't have to deal with the weird split. You don't have to deal with all the weird things. You can buy raw land. That's 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 a good one. So the gentleman asked, "Does this apply to raw land as long as it should be a single family R one?" Right. Following up, sorry, does it have to be over ten thousand square feet? For example, is it seven thousand five hundred square feet? The question was, does it have to be ten thousand square feet? No, I, I put the 10,000 square foot arbor, arbitrarily because it's an it's a easier split. Technically, the minimum, it should be like 2,400 because the, 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 the minimum lot size has to be 1,200, right? So the smallest lot you can split technically is 2,400. But I don't know many 2,400 square foot lots in general. And you don't have to be close to transit, right, for an FP9? No, okay. it does not have to be close to transit. So it's every, it just applies to every single lot in California. In urban areas? In urban areas, yes. So like, what's the definition of uh, Some lots that are single family are, are, are A, right? Agricultural. And those aren't going to apply. So you can't go out to like uh, a farmland with one, with one, one house and split that, that two, two acres to one acre. Yes, that's uh, based on that, based you on the law. leave that house alone for the most part. Right? Yes, most of the house alone, yes. So the original house. Original house, okay. But you could build on top of the original house. Yeah, you could technically build, add more. Like the, the duplex can be. Uh, yes, so many options, but yes, I mean, you can have, depends on the maximum height of the wall, but yeah, two stories, three stories, but yes, keep about 75% of the existing house. What's the stop somebody from demolishing the entire thing? Two months later, say, I decided I want to do a split. Okay, what was the question? Yeah. So the question was, what stops someone from demolishing the whole thing and then later changing the plans and the permit to do a duplex? Uh, just want to be more peace from the city, more time, and repeat the whole process again for the new plan check review. Great. <laughs> yeah, they... Uh, I mean, I don't know how they're going to check everything. 
because there's no rental registry for the state. Um, it would basically be an affidavit, I assume. You're saying that you're, when you're doing it, the city, the best they can do is probably say that no one tenant has lived there in the last three years that I know of. You know, like for example, if you bought that lot, right, from someone, and later on, like six months later, you decide I want to split it, or I want to do this, then how are you going to check the previous person like there was a tenant in there, right? I, I don't know how you're going to do that, unless you're going to just say, to the best of my knowledge, that I don't believe there was someone, a tenant in there the last three years. What about utility rates? You can check that. I, I don't know. If the city goes through that, then how are you going to pull utility bills from the previous, the previous owner? I can't even get utility bills call, call from my mom, you know? <laughs> So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure there's a way. Um, I think the cities that don't want to build, they're going to probably be more thorough. The cities that want to build, they're going to be like, sign an affidavit, call it a day. OK, so last two questions. I have one from the chat, and I have from John here. So the one I have from the chat is, uh, we, can build, we can build one ADU and a JADU, a junior ADU, and an R2 zone, right? No. This has nothing to do with the SB9. No. Uh, well, it has nothing to do with the SB9, but juniors ADUs are only specific for R1s. So in a multifamily area, like uh, like a duplex, only qualifies for ADUs. You can have two ADUs in a multifamily as long as they detach, not, not, not juniors. Okay, so to repeat it, so you need to, uh, junior ADUs are only for, for single family, single family residences. residences. So an R1 lot. R1 yeah. Okay. Last so, question. Um, with the ADU, is it true that in the, all of California you aren't supposed to do a short-term rental? You have to do long-term rental? Not What's the difference between the short-term and the long-term? So the definition of short-term versus long-term is long-term is over 30 days. Short-term is anything under 30 days. So in, in LA specifically, um, you can do short-term rental, but you have to live there, right? So what some cities are doing is, like, for example, Waikiki, Honolulu, they give permits for only so many short-term rentals, right? Like, more cities are starting to do that. This is, there's a quota. If it meets, like, then, then someone decides to drop out, then everyone gets in the lottery, then you hope and pray that you get it, because if you get it, guess what? You're making tons of money because there's a restriction, right? Or some cities... So the level of short-term, um, probably Patrick. Is Patrick here? No, he's not. But Patrick does short-term. So um, the, the level of, of, of legislation is going to be first. First cities are going to make you register, but give out as many permits as possible. The second one is limit the permits later. right? So that's probably like the evolution of like short-term rentals. And then the you can. In LA, you totally can do that. It's called the home sharing law. So, Salvador, uh, all ADU questions, he could probably totally answer all those for you. <laughs>